Welcome to Park City, Utah. We're in the mountains around this Mormon state and on what they call the greatest snow on earth. And the snow arrived in the Wasatch Mountains with a vengeance just a week ago. Thursday afternoon was warm, sunny summer. Friday morning, the storms came in. Winter arrived with a chill. And perfect conditions for the second Wiesman World Cup bobsleigh stop of the tour. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me is John Morgan. And John, Park City, Utah, the USA's second track. Very different in nature from Lake Placid. You could hardly be more different. There are two different personalities. This is a short track, a lot of quick turns. And, you know, you got to have a great start. It's a flat start. And uh, the track is very different than the track in parks in Lake Placid, which is great for the American athletes. This resembles a lot of the tracks in Europe, built for the 2002 Games, built early for the 2002 Games, opened in 1997. So, uh, you know, this drops off here pretty good. There's the start record. Crips and Lumsden last year, curve one. You gotta be very quiet up here. It's really slow, 30, 35 miles an hour as you reach curve two, three. No mistakes allowed. This little straightaway right here into sunny. Big sweep and left. You're rocking from about 40 to 70 in about 100 meters. And this is where it's quick, snowy. Now into a three-quarter combination of labyrinth. Every track's got to have one of these. They call it Albert Sally after Prince Albert of Monaco, five-time Olympic bobsled competitor. Now into the big sweeping Wasatch after the Wasatch Mountains and the local beer. Now into 10. Olympic curve, a lot of pressure down here. 13 is a challenge. Four and a half G's of force now into the graveyard of time on this track. This long straightaway up there, you can lose a lot of time through the finish curve. Very easy track to get down, tough track to get down fast. Well, the speed comes at you very quickly. By the time you're at corner six of 15 here, John, you're doing over 90 miles an hour. That is the fastest uh, accelerating track on the planet. Well, the minus two degree air tem uh, ice temperature, uh, it means that this is going to be a very fast track as well. They have cut this superbly. All the athletes in training just remarking on quite how quick it is. A beautiful sunny conditions as well for the fans to come out. Well, out at the top of the track, the sunny weather puts a smile on everybody's face. But of course, now the game face has to come out because they're getting ready to race. There is uh, our top Canadian, Lyndon Rush. He'll be third away from the start, which will be headed off by Edvin van Kalka. Top 10 in the World Cup rankings, in the FIBT rankings, go into a random draw. Steve Holcomb, winner last time out. Uh, he takes the eight start draw. All three American sleds early in the running. That's how they'll like it. We've got 28 sleds today, John. Only 20 go in the second heat. So we're going to lose almost a third of the field. There's pressure on right from the start. Well, there's a lot of people trying to qualify it in the seating. There's a first seed, second seed, and a third seed. So a lot of these teams aren't expected to win any medals, but a lot of them want to qualify for that second run. It moves them up into the points. See the Canadian athletes there. Of course, you get a big group of athletes because you need to fill a four-man sled. So for a lot of them, the two-man race is uh, just a preparation day or another training day in the weight room here. But for the two-man sleds, it's business as usual. We get Wiesman World Cup number two of the two-man bobsleigh competition underway with the Netherlands. This is Netherlands one, Edvin van Kalke, the driver, and six foot six of Sebren Jansmaar behind him. The tallest nation on the planet, the Dutch, also have the tallest two athletes in the field. Your attack sled. Two very big, strong, quick, cohesive athletes, track and field backgrounds. And the secret is for Yasmin is to get down behind his driver for the aerodynamic efficiencies that you need starting at the track right here. Boy, you drop out of there and it just you rock it. And you're already up to 65 miles an hour. Ooh, double loop there. That's not a good line. Speed 132, that's about 79 miles an hour, close to the field. First man down, our rabbit. He's got the fresh ice to work with. If there's ever a, the best heat, we'd want to have him right here. Well, he's having a really nice time. Oh, yeah, you just jinxed him. Yeah, absolutely. 
got very sideways down that final straightaway. He won't be the last guy we see sideways. That's what I call the graveyard of time, that part of the track. That is your whole run. You could be doing it perfectly to there. Sideways, the track goes uphill there. Once you go up, you can't go up. You can't have a fast time going uphill sideways. Two huge men. Choreography on ice. Probably exact number of steps from track to track. It's different in, get down with cat like movements. And now, you know, into the finish part of the track, the graveyard of time. We'll watch these pictures here. Bang. You know, on, right on the cut, you could see him make that mistake. That cost him a bet of 20 hundreds. Yeah. This is going to be a tough, tight race as well. Second up, Francesco Friedrich of Germany. He's pregnant. Gino Gerhardi. They get away immediately that they have the opportunity to, not wasting any time at all. Sun on the start area. They want to get away before it has a chance to soften even a fraction. Junior world champion. Had a good weekend in Lake Placid last week. Young. Smile from ear to ear when you're talking to him. Uh, I think it's pretty, pretty uh, consistent that uh, he really likes being out here. Last year he was the champion in the European Cup, the second tier of sliding. He won all seven two-man races and he won two of the four-man races of the season as well. He just wiped the floor with everyone else. You can see some of the shades coming up. That's because of the sun. And the sun right here at the low point it makes a real issue. He got through there pretty good. Good speed. Not as good as the Dutch. Well, but the Dutch erased all the speed. The speed trap was above their skid. Yep. And they're only 500. So I get the, I'm telling you, the Dutch lost two tenths there. But the Germans are in the lead. And the, you know, the all star coaching staff of the Germans ran a space. Nice off there. And the great Christoph Langens at the top of the track. There's just so much talent to draw on. And for this kid, his first time ever here, these other guys have done hundreds. Look of at the runner tips here. The runner tips. He's drifting to the right side, his left. Then he's got to steer the next curve. Here in the graveyard. Not bad. I mean, he, he comes off, he taps, he doesn't try and steer away. Not really a skid. He lost a couple hundreds. You finish going uphill. You can see it. You know, television doesn't do it justice. But there's no mistakes allowed when you're going uphill. And it's Coach Christoph Lange, we get a chance to see him totally there, but he wears the run right in his forehead. Next up on the top of the ice, Canada's Lyndon Rush, 31 years old from Silver Lake, Alberta. And bronze medalist in the four-man at the Vancouver Games. Lascelles Brown. Celis Brown sliding for Monaco for that Canadian, Canadians. Of course, his original debut was on this track with Winston Watt in 2002, the Olympics. They had the start record here until last year, where his Canadian teammates, Cripps and Jesse Lumsden, which was Canada 3, broke the start record last year, but that record stayed around for a decade. Ooh, way through through six. Seven speed, decent, plus four, good lines. He could erase that, and he had good lines there for Wasatch. Olympic curve, plus six, losing time. Speed on the left. Still just a hundredth of a second away, and oh boy, great run there through it the is. final there, there it is. There is an example of a plus six. Minus five, he had the best lines, 13, 14, through the graveyard, up the hill and around. There's an experienced pilot. Well, Lascelles Brown, king as he's known, uh, he does bring such athleticism to this program. There he is on the back handles. He just powers it out. This man is a real bull, but look at the final steps into the sled, hurls himself in and adds extra momentum. Well, you know, Lyndon Rush is a great athlete, too. So it takes two to push the sled. Starts off, Rush is a great athlete. But he's most importantly a great driver. That was the best drive down the track we've seen so far. But he also had the best start time. Him and Frederick had the best start time. Next up, two of our three U.S. sleds. Corey Butner already tasted medal success last weekend in Lake Placid. 
couple of gentlemen from California. Coey's from Utica, California, and Chuck Berkeley, Walnut Creek. I think they he went to Cal Berkeley. Track and field okay. athlete. There's snow on Butner, it. breakout weekend in Lake Placid. Big boys. Americans really had a coming out party last week. Not Holcomb, you expect that of him, but Butner and his teammate Cunningham, they had the three of the best four stuck. That big mistake there. Huge mistake. Tap it up there at the entrance to curve two. Speeds probably be a little bit less. 1500s away. This is still seeing him in the top three. Good speed, 132.5. 17 down now, good lines before the Wasatch big pressure curve. Now this tricky, another big curve to the right, the Olympic curve. Watch this entrance and exit of 13, 14. Speed, he's down 19, he could get it to 14 or 15, 129, one. That's good too. Great speed. So Corey Butner, fourth best time out of four sleds. The mistake up top was crucial. Yeah, that mistake was at least, I think he could have been in the lead without that little tap above curve one. So watch the exit of curve one. Look at the runner tips. Watch him come to the right side of our screen. Taps before the take on. See, he was trying to get over to cheat, get on the take on early, but cost him. Now he's at the back end of the uh, sled. Is it a skid there and two? And he picked up speed down below here in Albert's alley. But, uh, you know, that mistake up top look at the runner tips good fourth best speed that's relative to the mistake on the exit of curve one look how low he, low he is in the sled next up then the other man who had a big weekend in lake placid fifth place in the two man seven hundreds away from the bronze medal and he was not denied in the four man getting on to the podium in saturday's season opener good Cunningham, the Monterey, California guy. There's three California guys in the last four minutes. Well, it's a famous uh, winter sports location, California. Well, Squaw Valley is the only Olympics where they did not have a bobsled competition. I mean, boy, if they would have had the Squaw Valley Olympics out there, the crazy California people would have embraced the bobsled world way back then. So I always call that the biggest detriment to the sport for the United States in the 20th century. But, Obviously, the Californians have got themselves involved now. Cunningham, bronze medal in the four-man last week. Fourth in the two-man. Boy, if there's anybody had a coming-out party in both events, it was Nick Cunningham, the bull rider that went to Boise State as a decathlete. 20 hundreds down. Got to keep the tail of the sled oh, nice and stable. Losing a lot. Oh, oh do you see? Something happened there. The spray come up at the back. Break, something happened. Something caused that spray. And that spray can only tell you about, look at the coaches. Yeah. They know. Mike Conn on the left, Brian Scheimer on the right. They know that wasn't what they expected, but something weird. I saw something weird there on the entrance to 13. A lot of ice coming up. And that's friction. And friction is like kryptonite to Superman. It doesn't work in bobsled. Here it comes. Taylor the sled gets very sideways, and John, he's counter steering on the here. turn. Yeah, that's. Here it is, late, late off that curve there. Skid. Oh, and he hit the take on the back end of the sled. He was late on the exit of 13. Down here in the graveyard. Not bad, but not a great run for Nick Cunningham. That 35 trips he had in Lake Placid last week was a big advantage. He didn't have any trips on this track. He's had three trips and two, man. This week that showed some rookie driving mistakes. Well, this is Max Arndt of Germany. Alex Rödinger behind him. And of course, Max Arndt's crew having a horrible time in the four man when they barely got all four men in. Rödinger making his first World Cup start of the season. Alexander Rödinger on the break screen. Athlete, consistent. Just a slide with Lange. This guy seems to use the two-man as a warm-up for the four-man. 
his uh, classmate, of course, he's what he fell at the start in the first run and relegated him to a eighth and ninth. I think you're going to see more out of him in the fourth end. But this track doesn't favor him because he doesn't get the great starts. Next week in Whistler, his type of track. But this is a very talented German young pilot. Very often we don't see talented German pilots. <laughs> you don't get into the German team without a lot of ability, that's for sure. Fifth, Fifth place. Time. That's 700s quicker than Nick Cunningham. And without quite so much apparent drama. No speed. Most of the way down. Well, and it's relative on this track. He had the sixth best start time. And that's why all the speed up top, he was way behind. You get up there in those top four corners with that bad start, and you're going to just not be able to overcome the deficit. And like we saw a skeleton early this morning, the, the, you know, you can't make up time on the bottom with a deficient start. Perfect lines. Perfect lines there in Albert's alley. Max on when you max out the speed so early in a run, it's very hard to find it lower down. But here's a man who claimed gold medal in the season opener in the four-man last weekend in Lake Placid, Alexander Zubkov, with Dmitry Chernenkov behind him. It does seem that Zubkov just seems to suit the four-man a little better. But, of course, with Soshi coming up, John, so much expectation on this man's shoulders. I think he suits the four-man a little bit better. Here's Rush, Friedrich, and Van Cocker is because of his age, you know? I mean, yeah. the start. So he needs to get, he's probably gonna get about a 490, 491 start, uh, will keep him in the mix. If he gets down there in their 495, it's gonna be tough. Big, I mean, I can say it, every one of these guys are huge. These are all 235 pound men. 490. That's so, good. That's thought what he needed for your mix. Now at the next clock, if he's only nine or ten hundreds behind, it's pretty decent. Speed right there is decent for that start. See the sled moving around a lot in those slow corners. Seven. I'm liking that. If I'm the Russian coaches, I like that. Next clock. If he keeps it at seven, gets it down to six, he could be the leader at the bottom. No, lost it back. The other question is too: is it's warm? There's been six or seven sleds down. How much of an advantage did those early sleds have? 15, now he's losing it back. So, perfect lines here. Not quite quick enough. Yeah. Fifth. Just didn't find the speed. Yeah, he was on the right, ex-Canadian coach. Well, he's 1800s behind at the start to Lyndon Rush and Lascelles Brown. And he's 1800s behind the finish. That means two tenths coming There's that three tenths there. multiplier in there, so he really beat beat him down the bottom. He's got to have good lines here. I got to look at the runners. Nah, he's coming to the left side of the screen. But he didn't try and steer away. Straight, a veteran pilot. Now he's going to sneak over to the right side of the screen. Now here in the graveyard, look how his head's positioned perfectly. Not bad speed, considering the start that he had. But look at the German, Max Arndt, with the yeah, best yeah. speed. So, start. Yeah, he's saying, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the tomb and the four-man. That's what he's yeah. saying right there. So now then, at, here is the hometown hero, Steve Holcomb. He's the two-man and four-man world champion. He grew up here in Park City, Utah, went to high school in the venue here as an alpine skier. And then, just out of curiosity, came for a U.S. bobsled trial. You can read the rest of the story in his book, which is just coming out. And bearing... Kirk Tomasevich, Shelby, Nebraska, the University of Nebraska football star. In and down, starts 485, but boys 1,200s behind. Wow. One thing Steve always says is it's the guys behind that give him the option to make a mistake and still get away with it. And they had the fastest start. Yeah, they were 100th off the start. I made a mistake about Russia Brown. They're only 500s ahead of, uh, of uh, Zukov at the start. 132.5, that's the second Six. quickest speed. He keeps this within 10 hundreds. He's got a chance to chase somebody down the second run. Again, he's going off seventh. Seventh is a fair. Here he comes. Seventh, five. Speed. In the graveyard, nobody's been down this track more than this guy. Four, here he comes, biggest speed. Yep. This is going to be right to the hundredth. 
Could be the leader. Oh. Little tap. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Well, there was two or three mistakes in the early corners before he even got to turn four, John. He made a couple of slides, and that gets tidied up. Different sled than last week. He's driving this uh, young Scratkins Todd Hayes combination sled. Well, bearing allegiance on the sled and the helmets to one of the greats of US bobsledding, Dewdrop Morgan, who passed away earlier this week. Great tribute for my family. I uh, appreciate it when they told me that last night. There's the sign. Well, we speak oftentimes, John, about how you've done this man and boy, but you weren't the first sliding, Morgan. Yeah, no, they're good starts here. You know, they're only 100th off the best start. I mean, Thomas Savage is built for this track power. Thanks, Stevie. Appreciate the tribute. So does my family. And now, 485 so far is the fastest start from Stephen Holcomb. Stand by to challenge potentially the track record, which stands at 477. Oscar's Melvardis always gets a relatively better start in the two man than the four man because there just aren't three other Latvians that are as quick as him. This might be the only driver in the field where he's better than his break, but his break is one of the best in the world. So that tells you they could do it right here. The start record's a jeopardy. There oh, it is. Oh, tie the record. Ridiculous. This guy, whoa, it's Sochi. I said it last year. I put him down. You know, a medalist Sochi. He hasn't figured out how to drive yet. He lost a chance to win a medal last week, like last week. Not very good second runs. But watch this. He's minus 13. He should be minus 19 or 20 with that start. So the next clock, probably single day, that's coming down. Ooh, look at the runner tip. She saw him playing with him. That's no confidence because he's no unbelievable athlete. Down to 10. Ooh, rough transition at 13. Graveyard, what's he going to do here? Little tap, 10. He'll be the leader. But single digits. There it Whoa. is. Whoa. 48 65. Sanders Prusis. Now, if he had Sanders Prusis' driving ability, no one would touch this kid. You know nobody could touch the guy. He may. Well, he may. I don't know. The school's still out on yeah. his as a driver, but my athletes, take a look. You're looking at a six foot four, 248 pound guy, the brakeman, six foot three, 235 pound driver. And both of these dudes can run. These are linebackers right here. And they get in, get down. Look at how they get a little rough by the driver. But, you know. We know the speed I mean, they have. They'd be wide Dreeskins. receivers. They you can't even linebackers. see the Dreeskins in back. Oh, yeah, a little bit of his shoulders back there. Yeah. That sled's built for these two big dudes right there. And they're, let me tell you, come out of a bobsled venue and see these guys. You'll be impressed with their size. Yeah. And because they're all so huge, they just look average. These guys are not average. Next up, Manny Mahata crashed in training. And uh, trying to put that behind him. Again, not many of these Germans have got much time on this ice. He had a breakout season a couple of years ago. He uh, medaled at least in one of the events if he didn't win. One, but his breakout season two years ago, he won the event in Park City. Then he went to Calgary, I think he won again. But not as proficient last year as his rookie year, but maybe it was that sophomore slump. Boy, is he in the back here. The start time. Four, nine, seven. That's two tenths of a second behind Melvardis. No wonder he's 3,500s back. Yeah, 2,000s off the... Pace, 35. Well, German sleds don't have very good setup on this day. And this is not, boy, you're going to see some pictures of Christoph Lang and the coach. Not going to be a very happy camper. Well, listen, he started two tenths slower than Melbardis, came down 1,500 slower than Melbardis. And that tells its own story. It's, short track here. It's, it's a like short a drag track. race. If the other guy's got the better engine, he starts faster, you never see him. What do they call that? The whole shot? Yeah. And dry, that's, you know, in, in this Park City, it's all about the whole shot. <laughs> Good lines, but again, he just doesn't have the starting speed. Little skid there cost him. Okay. And and wow. Embracing Movember wholeheartedly. 
So 10 of our 28 sleds are down. It is Oscars Melbardis of Latvia who leads the race from Lyndon Rush and Stephen Holcomb, the hometown hero. 18 more sleds to come in the heat. Stay with us. This position, only one tenth of a second, separate the top three spots. And as we move to the fourth spot, it's only four hundredths of a second back from there. So Freak from Germany, and Calker from Germany. Only 53 hundredths separate the top ten sleds. Let's have a quick break in the action before we kick off for sled number 11 and the sled of 20, uh, field of 28. Congratulations to International Bobsled Skeleton Federation, the IBSF, formerly known as the FIBT. Give us the moose shot, Kev. Welcome back to Park City, Utah. We're in the middle of the first heat of Wiesman World Cup number two for the two-man bobsleigh at the Utah Olympic Park. So 10 of our sleds have come down. There's your leader in the background, Oscars Melbardis, Damas Driskins, his brake man closer to us. That's right down at the finish area. And up at the start, lots of teammates milling about and offering their support. 11th of our 28 starters is the number two Dutch sled. This is Ivo de Bruyne making his World Cup debut season this year. He's come up very fast through the junior ranks and he's a real talent for the future. Not big, but really quick. Good starting team here. They could have the second best starts. They could have a 484, 483 start. This, this, these two young Dutch guys are impressive. 49. 49. Wow. That is a good getaway by anybody. Yeah, I thought last week in Placid it was even better. But he had his world championship debut last year at Lake Placid and disqualified for overweight. But uh, we saw Lake Placid last week and did pretty good. Yes. He's got a great attitude as well, just so up for everything. 133 1, that's very good speed. There's only one sled gone quicker, and that was Francesco Friedrich of Germany. And you notice no more sun in that part of the track. Down here, it looks like the sun's, the clouds have come out. That means the track's going to cool a little bit, get a little firmer. Good exit, no speed though. Could drop back a little bit more. Yeah, gone from six to seven. Not bad. Place. Not That's bad. Great. Not bad. Nikki Minicello on the right, coaching the Dutch, the former bobsleigh women's world champion. For great Britain. For great Britain. Indeed, yeah. So she's taken on the, the Dutch coaching job. She's coaching the men's bobsleigh, the women's bobsleigh, the men and women's skeleton, men and women's <laughs> luge programs as well. Well, the bright orange sled of the Dutch. De Bruyne, look at the runner tips, drifting to our right. He's, oh, you can see him trying to steer away a little bit. A little panic, speed in the bottom, straight, but ninth best speed. You could see that, and that was definitely worth at least a tenth of a second that would have moved him up to fourth or fifth place. He's seventh. His teammate Edwin van Kalke is fifth, four hundredths of a second between the two dice sleds. Simone Batazzo of Italy, a couple of years ago, won two World Cup races in the two-man. Dreadful season last year, needs to recover that form. 
I think he meddled on this track. He's done well on this track before. Very good in the late. 15th best start. Now, you got to hit a grand slam home run. A chance to finish in the top five. The track's just too. Ooh, he was on the wrong side of the entrance, the sunny curve. And that means he's got to go in there and steer with a lot of pressure. And that's why he's 2,600 down. This is going to fall into the 30s, probably the next clock. Speed, no, he held it. Boy, but that entrance is sunny. Looks like he's on the wrong side of the curve. But as experienced a pilot as you're going to find. Good lines there as well. 129 full. That's very good speed. A good run. Yeah. Considering the start time, look at that coaching staff. Wolfgang Stomper in the middle of the green jacket, former Austrian who medal on this track for two million bobsled in 2010. I know that for a fact. Well, he started 200s, 300 slower than Ivo De Bruyne and came down 200s behind him. Now watch him come down. To look on the left side of our screen. Watch how the, he should be on the right side. See the pressure? Look at has to go up, the sled has to go up and climb, and he's got to steer more than you should steer. It's not about the guy who drives, or girl, who drives the most that wins. It's the guy or girl who drives the least. Simona Batato lying in eighth place then, with 12 sleds down out of our 28 strong field. What did coaches do before iPads? Huh? iPads, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a record of everything you do on the run, instantly replayable. Chris Spring, Canada 2, Adam Rosenke behind him. It's Graham Richardson in the background. And again, like the Dutch using the Eurotech sleds, they're built in Holland. See those eyes focused, a little bit of a cadence. In, get down. 495, it's a decent start. On this track, ooh, there's a tap. Come out of there, curve one, little tap on the right wall. Not much, speed 85.8. It's not a signature. 2800's down now, all he can do is hope to stop the bleeding, we say. Keep it to 30 or 31. 27, that's great. There he stopped the belly, he stopped the bleeding. He's cut into it. And I think the track's cooling down. I think we're seeing a little bit firmer ice because these sleds with these start deficiencies up here, the last two or three, all of a sudden, look at the speed. Good speed, yeah, very good speed. Nice lines as well. He was 11th fast. Whoa, as the that's a good run. Sixth position. I wonder Richo's looking happy. Graham Richardson celebrated his birthday yesterday. Hey, that's a great run. That, that really is a great run. 11th best start, and he finishes in sixth. Well, he knows it as well. He gets out, and he's got beaming smile on his face, John. Well, he's the only guy in double digits at start. Mahata had the 13th best start, finished 10th. Everybody else, the guy with the best starts in first, the guy with the third best starts in second, second best starts in third. And here's perfect lines. That's why he had that perfect line in the exit of the graveyard. Good speed there. Fichet's Fichet, yeah. Olympic gold medalist and skeleton on the right. And his father on the left, 64 Olympic Games in cross country. Combined. Jim Shea the track for a while. The lure of the track is great. Rico Peter of Switzerland, halfway into our field now, 14th of our 28 sleds. Don't forget, only the fast 20 go through, so we are starting to get to the situation where the race is fast filling up. And Nick Cunningham, he's 13th. Mm. Sidious sled program. Look at the eyes. Well, he hopes to get into a single digit start time. This could be 11 or 12 start here too. 13th. Now all things being considered, he should be 60 hundreds behind at the bottom. But I think he'll probably be more like 40 hundreds behind because I think the track's good. Very rarely do you see the track be an advantage for somebody coming down later. But remember, we had bright sunshine. Yeah. 
now. In the early slants. 132.7 again. That's very good speed. You know, we're thinking now that there's been there's no Swiss sled in the top ten. That's because Biat Hefty is back home, nursing an injury. So Peter is holding the hopes of the Swiss. Good speed in the bottom. He said he's going to be wow. 40 hundreds behind. He's 17 hundreds behind. Wow, that's okay. a great run. Now I'm making the statement officially. We're going to see some strange times coming up. I don't know what the temperature is now, but look, you can see it's totally overcast. This track is definitely weather affected. There's a valley up here, so there might be a temperature change. I don't know what, but definitely the track's cooled down. And you know, with that start deficiency, he should have been way back. Well, he had good lines at the top. Watch the runner tips. Nothing happening there. He's just allowing the sled to fly, and that is so much of the secret on this track. Not the greatest top speed down at the bottom. But he didn't take as long getting there as some of his rivals. Well, you know, the sled works on such a tiny, tiny micro surface. John, we have snow as well. The weather is definitely changing. Wow, now this could throw a spanner in the works. Heath Spence of Australia with Duncan Harvey behind him. Start draw number 15. This is his first World Cup race of the season. The Aussies were here last year, last weekend, racing in heavy snow in the American Cup. They call it the North American Cup now because they, they've been challenged by that little sailing organization. Yeah, some sailing race. Notice borrowed equipment again, a Eurotech sled from Canada. That, well, I don't care what sled you borrow. Great piece of you can't drive like he's doing right now. Skidding between curve one and two. Of course, we've seen strange things happen the last couple of sleds that come down. If the conditions are good, he might just have a chance to put himself firmly in the top 20. 130.4, now that's about two kilometers an hour down of where he needs to be. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of control here of the sled because he's made those mistakes up in one and two. He's almost, could be over almost a full second off the pace. Again, he's not been driving this sled long. And you know when you get into a different car, somebody else's car, you, you don't know where the wiper stalks are and everything else. It's the same with driving this, a 49.82 slide. That might not be enough to earn him a second heat. Well, Nick Cunningham with 49.18 will be feeling a little bit more comfortable. He Spence slips in behind the number three US sled. He doesn't look overjoyed with that run. Well, if you're trying to learn how to drive a bobsled, don't watch this. Out of curve one, steers too hard, back ends in a skid. And this is up top of the track. You know, when you make a mistake, then he's got to steer hard. Now here's on down to Albert's Alley. Look at the rudder tips, looking for friction. Now he's in a drift. And when you get into a drift like that, you tap, that forces him down into the belly of the curve. And this here, but again, I, in his defense, he's probably got a few trips on that slide. All the replays we've seen, he's coming late off the corners. I think the track is different from how he was anticipating. And a little bit of light precipitation. While well, they were saying the weather forecast this morning, there was a tiny chance of it. It is here, though. Justin Cripps with Jean-Nicolas Carrière behind him. I, if I was these guys, I'd go quick. Yeah. You might start seeing the smart teams go as quickly as they lose that light turns green. They're gone. They don't even wait 20 more seconds to, to do it. Start. 494. Decent. Cripps holding the start record until those Latvian monsters just broke it. But he had Jesse Lumpston. Now we're being told that he had tied the record. Yes, he did, 477, tied the record. So <laughs> Jesse Lumpston not pushing this weekend. 132.7, that's good speed. So the tiny bit of snow melts very quickly under the weight of a two-man sled. It's normally at the start if it's going to affect you where it affects you worst. He's doing pretty good here. He's taking advantage of this late draw. Decent speed. This is a good run for Canada 3. Okay, 13th place. That should see them into the second heat. And at the moment, when you're 16th out of a 28 sled field, only four more sleds can get into the race. I bet some money is going to make it. Yeah, I think so too. Good athlete, used to slide with Lyndon Rush. Jean-Nicolas, the only Quebecois on the team. 
Look at the lines. We always say, look at the eyeballs and the runner tips. This is beautiful lines. Great transition in Albert's Alley. One of the better lines we've seen from Justin Cripps. Canada three. Hey, Mom and Dad. Justin. Mams and Mams and fans out on the track. All the two-man sleds have to fit into those dimensional boxes. There are a lot of other rules about where the axles can be, the openings and so on. But one of the key things, of course, in the race is the all-up weight. The heavier the weight, the faster it will gain momentum. And that's why there is a maximum weight in the sport. That's in Gallica okay. of Switzerland. We talked about okay. Ed Hefty being injured. And so it's effectively Swiss 3 and Swiss 4 now on the World Cup. Concentration. Look at the eyes. His break man, Abe Morlu. And Martin, first time we've seen him in a couple of years, thought he'd retired, but he saw the opportunity for the two Swiss pilots that are injured. And Switzerland needed some help, and uh, come the hour, come the man. Well, in Switzerland, it's a little different prestige for a bobsled driver. Sport has got a little bit of history in that country. National heroes. John, he didn't have the fastest start, but he carried good momentum through oh, the He's a good center. driver. That, that's that's speed. the top speed. He's a good driver. Always had good starts. Won a World Cup medal in Chisholm a few years ago in four man bobsledding. Well, we'll see how good he is here at the bottom. He's only two tenths down. Anything up around 130 kilometers in speed is big deals. Close to it. 16. Five. Very quick. Larry ducks his head again. Wow. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Eric Allard, the French pilot on the left, now coaching Switzerland. Hey, I told you some strange things were going to happen. Man, where did he get that off? A 496 star. Take a look at that cloud cover. See yeah. how that cloud cover wasn't like that in the first eight sleds came down. Hey, Martin, how about yeah. that action? Fourth place in the first heat, Martin Gallica. What he, you know, finished last week in Lake Placid, 15th or yeah. 16th? Look at these good lines. Snowy and then into the graveyard. Look at him duck his head here. Look, look, he's ducking his head. Mm -hmm. Brave. The straight away. Yeah, Brave. He, no, he knows where How he's good. going. I mean, he knew he was straight. Look at the runners. Yeah. That, okay. He's got a five-star rating of driving the sled. Yeah, yeah baby. Loving that. Swiss yeah. are loving that run. Well, that's a sensation. Now the question is, who else is going to come out of left field? You've got to look at Jürgen Lewacker, not the greatest starter, but a good pair of hands on the D-rings. And starting 24th place, John Jackson of Great Britain. Well, two great results in Lake Placid. He's got to fancy his chances, too. If he can start in the early 90s. Yeah, this is a good drive. What a chance. This is a good drive. Okay, 508, even further behind. But if the ice is hardening up under them, getting quicker and quicker as the runs progress, he'll have good speed at the bottom. I mean, he's a speed virtue, which is a guy that you know might not get a good start by the bottom part of the track. Hey, if you and I both fall on an airplane together, and you're 100 pounds and I'm 200 pounds, I might fall quicker, faster than you, but eventually we're going to fall at the same speed. That's the same principle on this track. 5,100s down. I bet you he gets it into the 40s. He's 18th at the moment, so he is Here comes 51 to 50. Speed, 129. 129 eight. one of the best speeds. Could be in the 30s here. 44, 15. spot. Give him 200 more meters of track, he'd be in the top seven. Wow. Speed merchant. This is turning into quite a topsy-turvy race. And he was our 18th sled. We have 10 sleds still to come, and only two more to fit in the race. Yeah, Jurgen doesn't get good starts in the two-man. He gets the three big guys behind him in the four-man. He's a little bit more competitive. And the longer tracks, he's got a better chance. I think it's easy to say. He loves to drive a bobsled. Yes, he does. He loves everything about it. And so does this guy as well, Jan Verber. He's got a grin like a Cheshire cat. In fact, the headshot we shot with him may be the only time I haven't seen him smile. And the veteran Jan Staklaske behind him in the Czech sled. Not the only Czech-speaking uh, slider here as well. One of the new sliders for USA, Andy Drabble. 
Mm. The first generation American from Czech parentage. Oscars Melbardis leads a very tight race. And you know what? There's another half dozen sleds could get packed in that lead group yet. Good athlete here. He's been toiling in the 10 to 15 every once in a while. Oh, what a story. There's done. Might have jumped in. The replay will show. There's little D rings in there. And sometimes you jump in and your foot catches the D ring. It causes the sled to go left or right. Obviously, something happened. Imagine trying to jump into your car when it's already moving without touching the steering wheel as you leave yourself in. That's exactly the problem here. 132 is decent speed. Considering that tap, he's only 5200s off the pace. I said he got no chance. Now he's 6200s. A little late there, slapped out of 1314 and in the graveyard. 128 speed. But in the race at the moment, 18th place. 49-3-9, that's bad news for Nick Cunningham. Uh, Cunningham in the USA 3 sled, 49-1-8, so he's just in front. That means for Cunningham, he's got a couple of sleds behind him, Jan Verber and Heath Spence of Australia. Wow. I thought you see the, the right foot, see the right foot gets in there, and it comes out of the drive lines, and. You know, the right side means the sled's going to go to the right, so I couldn't have hit the D-ring. He might have just got in too yeah. late, but there was a lot of pressure on the uh, runner when he came out of the drive lines. That all of a sudden, he just went dead left. Well, of course, he's not looking in under the cow when he grabs the D-rings. He may just have grabbed one and half grabbed the other and tweaked it a little to the left, and at that stage, it doesn't take much to come offline. 19 sleds down. This will be our 20th sled and the race will then be full for the second heat, which leaves all the other eight sleds coming up with the problem of making the race. This is Russia's Nikita Zaharov. Yuri Selikov behind him, a real veteran now in the Russian breaking lineup. Just don't understand why a small little nation like Latvia just puts these start monsters in the front seat of the sleds. Albardus leads. And then you got a nation like Russia who's going to host the Olympics. They've got those drivers who've got 19th best starting. Zach Rock. I don't, you know, in this sport, if you can't start the sled, especially in small 1200 meter tracks, you have no chance. Now, in Russia, though, Sochi, 1600 meters, almost 350 meters longer than this track. Fast. So he's, he's going to have a chance, but still with that start deficiency, he's got a chance to maybe finish in the top ten. Well, sosky has got three uphill sections. If you don't have the speed at the start, John, you're not going to find them on the uphills. It's okay, but it ain't. I mean, a decade ago, if you couldn't start in the top six, you wouldn't be in a Russian team. You just wouldn't. You know, now, I don't know. Well, they had Zukov and Papa were the two guys that yep. were the mainstays of the Russian team in the late 90s all the way through the decade, and Zukov's still here. Yep. Zukov was a 16-year-old junior world champion, and I think he doubles Luz. Yep. And then he came over to bobsled at about 18, and he's still here. And Popov's still here coaching these coaching young guys these guys. as well. Zukov's still, you know, <laughs> yeah. one of the favorites. Still grinding it out. Runner tips. Good Look run, but... 15th best speed, yeah. but he ended up 18th at the bottom. That shows you the speed helped him crack the top 20 and maybe get a second run. He may do yet. He Spence is on the bubble in 20th place. So now it is go fast or go home for France, for Korea, for Monaco, Great Britain, Romania, Slovakia, Belgium, and the second of our Russian sleds. This French guy did good last week. Yeah. Very impressive. World Cup debut last weekend for Loic Kosteag. Oscars Melbardis is your race leader. But right now, it's not about the top of the pile, it's about squeezing in the bottom of the pile somewhere. Well, he did good in like Placid. Well, if he's learned to drive on La Plaine, that's a driver's track. Let's see how he fares here. 505 getaway, same as Zaharov of Russia. A 
line is good and good. Sun speeds decent. A little rattling of the sled. 14th yeah, place at the moment. Right? Let's see if he can cling on inside the top 20. Let's listen to the loud rattling here in this sled. It's not rattling. When you're in one of these things, John, it feels kind of loose and rattly despite how tightly they're put together. Well, that's because you're, you went down yesterday and wrenched your back. Yeah. 17th place. Looks like he's going to make the second run. May well do. That's great. Yeah, first time ever on this track. That's a great run from here. He's had six practice trips. Yeah. And, of course, two of them, three of them, were, would have been in the oh. format as well. So Carrying the uh, Laplante sticker, yeah. where he's from. Looking forward to going back to the Yeah, we, that, that's a great track. That we got back there last year. We're, we're all, look at the hard transition, 13 to 14. Look at the heads. You know, and this is where you set yourself up for the great brother. He goes down, then he has to come back up. And that might cause him to drift to the left side. Yeah, yeah. See that? The entrance to that curve on 13 is where he made the mistake. He didn't make the mistake here. He made the mistake on the entrance to 13. So, Lloyd Costeg of France is in the race, and that means that Heath Spence of Australia is bumped. 20 in, we've had 21 sleds down, and another challenge now. This is Yun Jung Won of Korea. Well, they'll be doing well to get into the second heat. This is going to be a tough race to make. I'm, tell you that, I'm impressed with the Koreans every year. Guys aren't small. <laughs> That's for sure. They might be small in 5'8, five, 5'9, five, but they're but they're very athletic. Start. Best start. It's not great. Good exit of one. Little skid at two. Nice line. This sled's loud also. You know what? It wasn't really good science, stupid. Physics, noise is a loss of energy. Absolutely right. 131.2, not bad speed, but again, not going to worry too many of the front runners. Oh, but he's looking for a top 20. If he stays within 60 of this next clock, he's got, he lost a lot there. He's still got a chance. Well, on the bubble, bubble at the moment is Jan Verba of the Czech Republic. And 21st. 21st place, just outside. That's where he was last week in Lake Placid. John, there's a, a great Chinese expression, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one single footstep. And you know, to get to the top, you've got to start at the bottom. And that's yeah. exactly what these guys are doing. Every week, they learn more. Yeah. i just like to see some European or American influence, Canadian influence into their program. Pierre Luders got hired by the Russians. These aren't bad lines here. A little bit of a, watch him go to the left side of the screen. To the back end, tapped. And you know, he's steering. He's down 13, 14. Watch the sled go high, watch it come down. And now watch him in the graveyard. That's pretty good launch there. Oh. Well, it's not often you find Monaco struggling to make the cut, but star draw number 23 for Patrice Savelle and Ellie Lefort. And Patrice is definitely missing the presence of Lascelles Brown on the back of the two-man sled. I think Patrice was a little embarrassed last week. Look at the start time, though. The 23rd best start. How many sleds? 25 sleds? He's the 23rd sled. The worst sled, that's... Yep, 5'11". Of course, he had Lascelles Brown pushing him last year. He won a medal, Lascelles Brown, in Calgary in 2010. Monaco's first and only medal in the World Cup. 32-4, that's decent speed. Well, he's, 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 he's got great eyes and hands. But we can't comment enough on how this track will start. This is like Innsbruck, this is like Winterberg. The start is so important. Well, he's got a good 20. sled as well. Christian Rice built sled. He's in the race at the moment. There's the driving coach, Bruno Bujon, with the uh, highly polished forehead. 
<laughs> but uh, it's like somebody just pulled off a couple of the plug leads from, from his V8. It's not running as fast at the top as he needs it to do. In the race at the moment, and that is at the expense of Jan Verber of the Czech Republic. So Verber is bounced. Look how many steps the brakeman takes here. You know, some influences, you know, he's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sometimes you get to that point of no return where you pull the sled back, especially with the way that descent is. I think you want to get yourself in there and get in, get the inertia, you know. They did a study on the starts, and the start is one and lost in the first 10 meters. And he was running way down there. I don't think that helped. He had the 23rd best start. There's no way those two are going to have the 23rd best start. I think that's on the net on there that he ran too far. There. John Jackson of Great Britain, John Baines on the back of the GB1 two-man sled. They had a very confident, inspiring weekend last time in Lake Placid. Oscar Smelbardis is the race leader. As we follow down to the bottom of the top 20, it is Monaco now who are on the bubble if Great Britain have a decent run here. Hilti sled. Come on, man. Yeah. Mixing and matching. I wonder how old this sled is. Well, uh, modern work from McLaren International, the Formula One team on their aerodynamics. Part of this new British program. Let's take a look, see if they can get down into the fours. 498, 497. 491. Good getaway. Yeah, Two yeah, yeah. tenths of a second quicker than the last sled we saw from A lot of pressure curve one, though. Slide 85.9. That's speed. Well, that's relative to the start. But... Two cents back at the moment in eighth spot at the start. 132.6 again. Decent speed. This is good run. Remember, you got good starts, good sled, good driving. This track's ready to give it up to you. Here he comes. 16. In this is just 10. like the Swiss sled did. Speed, 129.7, magical speed. This could be top four. Three. Sensational. Yes. 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 Come on, you two. Absolutely. Well, John, you know, the cloud cover coming over, I told you. Cover coming over has allowed the track to remain fast. And he, these guys were so up after Lake Placid last weekend. Third place after the first heat. I've been doing this since the year 2000. I have never seen a I told you, performance I like that. I told you, well, you know, he's a little bit of luck of the draw here. If he would have gone in the top ten, he wouldn't be in the third place. Yeah, Nothing maybe, against you, everything he may just well did. Be right. No, it's all about yeah, yeah. the late draw. The ice is more firm. And sometimes, it's, you know, Mother Nature, fifth best speed. Seventh best start. You know, you said it yourself. Yeah. If you start, you have a chance. Yeah. The track will say to you, I'll reward you with a top start. He did it. Good drive lines. Congratulations to the British. Yeah. Pete Gunn looking very happy, as will Jacko B. So. Starting to lose track of who's in and out of the race now. What about this kid, Andy Neagu from Romania? First time on the World Cup this season. Another young driver. He's the son. Neagu, the, uh, who's the Romanian, competed, I think, in the 88, 92, 94 games. And then he moved to Winterberg. It's Paul Nagu is the, is the father. Paul's the passenger, drives passenger sleds at Winterberg, so they, this kid grew up in Winterberg. Decent start, 503 as well. This kid grew up in Winterberg. Yeah. So he's been down the track a lot. We'll see what he's got when we get to Winterberg later in the season. Big skid up the top has hurt him. Oh, a little wavery at the back. Yeah. Yeah. The sled's got that loud sound. 20th at the start, so already in danger. Well, it's a good line there. He's coming in. He's in the race at the moment. Well, that type of line in the bottom part of the track, if he continues this up into the graveyard, he'll be the top 20. I think this looks better than 129, 128 tap. Uh-oh. Uh, so probably 80, 78. Could make it still 70, uh, 74. Oh, just that out. tap. Yeah. That tap. So another sled that got lost in the graveyard of time. Yeah. Every track's got one, and that low point down in, in the Park City track just ate him for probably would have been 17th or 18th if he didn't have that. And they've just looked up at the scoreboard at the end of the outrun there and seen their position. 22nd spot.
And here it goes wrong. He just panics. Ste tries to steer away. No, he doesn't. I'll give him credit. Didn't try and steer away, but he hit too hard. Does he duck his head here? No, the driver, the, well, the brake came up Brakeman pretty quick. popped up, but the, the finish line is right there, just out the last corner. So, uh, Andres Neagu fails to make the cut. What about Milan Janosak of Slovakia? Vladimir Simic behind him. First two-man start of the season for him. And there, Great Britain in third place. Yeah, no wonder he's looking like he is the cat that got the cream. Milan, the oldest competitor in the field. Yep. Doesn't bother. Hotelier. I think he is a throwback. Well, he's the way the sport started, isn't it? A gentleman who loved it and could afford to pursue it. And, and you know, until, until so many of them came from the military and could actually survive doing it, he had to have a private wealth. He funds the team, he pays the travel, the hotels, he pays the athletes, he buys the kit. He is an arch enthusiast. Well, and you just saw your reduce this well. 70 hundreds. Could need 129 speed down here, not a problem. 128. No. Ooh, Brayman puts his head up as yeah, well. He's looking know where he was. Yeah. 24th. That's Should about right. It's it's so tough, this track. The, you get to corner six and you're at maximum speed and you're pulling two or three G's from six all the way down through 10, 11, 12. It's just a mind-bending blur. Every other track, you get a big pressure corner, then you get a release, you're on the straight, you have a medium pressure corner. Here, the pressure comes on you on six and you never feel it until you get out of the finish straight. Look at the sled drift to our right. Break the and then the brake on the finish straight here. Oh, hello, hello, that's not where you want to put the brakes on. And I don't think Milan knew that. I don't think he put the brakes on, but no, just no. the aerodynamic presence was worth 500s. Yeah. Michael Serize of Belgium with Sebastian Trier behind him. Serize started his uh, career as a French driver. Look at this, wow. DSG Lunderstein. Wow. Okay, Don't so recognize the Lunder, but that's... <laughs> there you go. Somebody's had a fiddle with the Dresden. <laughs> well, they list that. The chassis is the first name if there's one of those combination of the chassis and the caliber. Same as Formula One. Yep. Well, it's nice to see Belgium in the competition. Of course, France and Belgium made a mistake there. Border countries speak much similar languages. You know, what Belgium is, we always talk about the two-man world championship trophies named after Max Hoover. Belgium athlete lost his life at Lake Placid in 1950 in a tragic accident in 1949. But he was also a medalist at the 48 Olympic Games in St. Louis. So Belgium was uh, one of the top nations in the they won another medal at the 32 or 36 games, but uh, they were one of the major nations. Max Hooper's story was published uh, a year or two ago. Remarkable man. So, so many of the sportsmen in those days were, came from the bizarrest backgrounds and went on to the bizarrest things. 49 67 slide. See, not a coach, but a teammate. Shake of the head from Serize. They got my award for the helmets. Yeah, great looking helmet. Mind you, Shelly Rubmans is going to take a bit of beating. Uh, that was a surprise for her when it came out of the box. Uh, somebody offered to paint her a helmet. She said, yeah, go ahead. Wow. The lines. Good transition. Can't see the brakeman. And he's a little bit of a drift. You've got to do the big things right and the little things right in this sport. Every single detail is vital for performance. Now we get to our 28th and final sled. Now, this is the third Russian sled we're seeing. It's not Russia 3. This is the random draw. This is Russia 2. Alexander Kazyanov with Max Belugin. When was the last time Belugin started 28th in a field of anything? In medals in format. And last year, I think he was leading in four man at the end of the first run. He might have slipped, but the this is a reputable yeah. 
driver. They got the team, they got the kit. But in two man, I think he's one of them guys, like I talked about. The force, he just uses this as a warm up for the four man. Much more proficient in four man. Good start uh, compared to the last 10 sleds we've seen. So with that type of start, a good drive here. That's a top 10 start. Let's see if he can put in a top 10 performance. Keeps it clean, three tenths back. 16th place at the moment, John, so could drift out of the top 20, which would yeah, be... Yeah, the guy in the bubble right now is his teammate, Zakharov, yeah. so looks like he's going to knock Zakharov out. Win, lose, or draw, there's only going to be two Russian sleds in the top 20. Good lines, no speed. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a guy that gets into the top 20. It's going to be close, 19. though. Oh, my goodness. Look at the Russians. Pop off, you saw there, Pierre. Good with the bat. Yeah. Win, win if you lose a few. Yeah. yeah. One in, one out. 13th yeah. best start, 15th best finish. Not a good drive. If you were to choose the driver to keep in, I'd take Kazyanov over Zakharov just from Big a, a further 12 months experience and Not a better a question. start. Yeah. Here's the top of the track where you have to be just so quiet with your steering. End of sunny. Look at that brakeman's head buried in there. Look at the driver's head a little bit. Yeah. Tilt. It looks like he got a little late in the pressure point. You really carry a lot of pressure all the way down this track. If you're old and not ready for it, you pay for it all the way down the rest of the weekend. Oscar Smelbarvis is our race leader with Damas Drewskins. They rip the start. 477 start record time getaway. And he kept it clean down the ice, a little late on a couple of turns, but Feisley hit nothing and did not panic. He leads the race from Linden, Russia, Canada, and John Jackson of Great Britain, fourth place, Stephen Holcomb of the USA, the Park City resident. Wow, topsy-turvy first heat. Fast 20 go through into heat two, but look at this. 1200s, the top five, look at that. 13. Eight, nine, wow. 10. Look at that. You're talking 900 separates six, second through eight. Yeah. Expect a lot of changes in the second heat. There's the Belgians. RJ down there on the right hand side, the guy who's in charge of the track crews here and has produced such great ice all week. And Nick Cunningham. It's been a long wait, John. He is in the race. Zaharov was in behind him, got bumped. So did Saval, Verba, and the rest of that list. But for Nick Cunningham, fifth and third last weekend in the two-man and four-man, he clings on after waiting nearly an hour for the axe to fall on him. He'll be first to go in the second heat. I think there's going to be a little shake-up. Get the cards out. Yeah. Start, uh, you know. Shaking them up because I think we're going to see some big changes. You got money on this race? I think again. We'll be back for the second heat. Stay with us for much more action from Park City, Utah.